Um, yes, I actually uh, represented Windsor Grammar School, which is about 20 or 30 miles from here, uh, in my senior school years before I emigrated to Australia. Um, and I didn't really play anything except the social chess in all that time. Uh, but in 1990, um, I was working as development manager, uh, development manager of the school on the Gold Coast uh, in uh, Queensland, Australia. And uh, um, I started up a chess club there. One thing led to another. 2001, I resigned from the school and started up a chess in schools business, uh, which also entailed building our own purpose-built chess centre. So for from about 1990 to 2015, when I sold the chess business to uh, my offsiders, uh, I was totally immersed in chess and on a day-to-day -day basis uh, seeing school um, principals, school teachers, parents, children who are playing chess, etc., etc. Um, 2015, I uh, retired and immediately took up some master's research at a university in Queensland. And uh, I, was, I was motivated to have a look at um, sort of the standard research which has been done and extending some of it. But I'll talk about that um, uh, t uh, tomorrow morning, I think, in the uh, workshop. It is, I think, or tomorrow afternoon in the workshop, I think. But um, I have something sort of more niche to talk about here because we've only got 10 minutes. Um, I started the, the uh, master's research with a survey of stakeholders and uh, I hadn't been able to find anyone, any st survey of stakeholders in my literature review but I found out today that the uh, Chess in Schools and Communities have done one which hasn't been published and also this morning I found out that the Armenian Chess Federation had done one which hadn't been published. But um, my uh, survey of stakeholders um, was, was done in February 2016 and there were 315 respondents to an online, voluntary online survey. And um, what, was the, what amazed me and my supervisor was that um, of the respondents, we all know that school principals are very, very busy people, um, 52 of them found the time to complete a 34 question survey, um, as well as probably over 100 other teachers, some of whom were chess coordinators, teachers, and over 100 parents of children playing chess answered the survey. So we had 315 respondents. And even more amazingly, three, uh, 834 comments to wade through, which I um, had to um, code, if you like, manually, code them manually by question by question and analyze them side by side so that the results of the quantitative, quantitative survey got real meaning from some of the comments which I regarded as uh, uh, virtually sheer gold dust in, in chess terms. Anyway, um, that survey completed kind of informed um, a lot of things. The, most of the questions, or about half the questions at least, related to children um, or educational, various types of educational benefits or other benefits for children in learning to play chess. Now we haven't got time to go through all of that, if you want to see the details of the survey, particularly the side-by-side -side analysis, which is quite interesting reading if you're in that field, then I believe we've printed out some copies which are at the, at the, at the office. Um, so what I'm having a little bit of a look at today, by the way, I, I make the point that I am here to learn. That's primarily why I'm here, and I've already learnt heaps just last night and today. Um, where are we here? Okay, so what I'm looking at here, just in this brief presentation, are what I call, shall we say, unusual kids, or kids who are a bit socially challenged, that kind of thing. And I'm motivated to do that by personal um, observations when I had the chess centre. There were numerous occasions when my, I and my wife um, saw the same pattern with different children. They, they were children who probably either they were badly behaved or they, they couldn't um, really talk to other people very well, they couldn't communicate very well, they didn't understand other people's emotions and that kind of thing. You know the type of child I'm talking about. I don't want to pigeonhole them too much because every child's different, but I found, we found that if the child didn't like chess, leave them. Let them go, don't, don't bother them. 
But if, if they did start to show an interest in chess, it was very well worth putting a bit of extra effort into them than, than all of the other kids. Because this, the typical pattern, which was often reported by the mother of the child, was, I can't believe what chess has done for my child. Came here, just it was all of these problems, behavioural problems at home in particular. And that when he got to the chess, well, he, he liked the uh, confines of the chessboard, he liked the rules. Um, he got good at chess, he started making friends, he didn't have any friends. And uh, getting good at chess eventually really helped his self-esteem, which is very important growing up, of course, to feel good about yourself or something. And then the mother would say, ultimately, it just made their behaviour so much better at home. So I'm, I was I'm motivated just to talk about that just for these, these few moments. Um, because the survey looked at, had questions relating to um, autism, um, behavioural difficulties, um, learning difficulties, nerds. Is, is, it, is, it, is the term nerds familiar for people in all countries or is it? No, that's right. So nerds um, and um, those kind of things. So we even had a question there was uh, to do with um, do kids who play popular, who are popular kids who play sports and that kind of thing play chess as well. There were those kind of things. Um, so, so what the survey said uh, was that, yes, very strong response, close to 80 or 90 percent response on those three questions to do with um, ADHD, if you like, or autism, um, behavioural problems, learning difficulties. Very high proportion thought that learning to play chess had benefits for those children in terms of educational benefits. And whether the, the, the popular kids who are good at sports, whether they, they were more likely to play chess or, or less likely, etc. Again, there was quite a strong response to say, there's lots, of there's lots of kids who play those popular sports who are good at chess and love chess as well. It's not just for nerds. And I, I say that, it's only about four years ago that I recall speaking to a deputy principal and asking him why the school didn't have chess. And he said, oh, I'd love to have it here, but our principal, he believes that chess turns children into nerds. So there's, even now, there's, there's the, the, the question regarding nerds wasn't clear. It, it, it was, there was still an awful lot more people thought that, um, that you don't have, that obviously you don't have to be a nerd to play chess, about 80 or 90 percent, but there was still that feeling out there somewhere that yes, chess is for nerds. Uh, and so there, it is obviously something which still has to be um, confronted, if you like. But I think that um, chess generally has made a lot of progress in the field of, uh, of, of sort of, um, what's the word? Um, people having fixed views on something in society. And I think that um, certainly where, where, we've, where we're at in, on the Gold Coast, it, it, things have improved absolutely dramatically. The, if, you, if you want to read anything about um, research which has been done in this field, well, there's been some research studies. They haven't really, they, they, they're all pretty well, exploratory, if that's the right word. Um, and but the people are looking at it, and 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 they do say, let's do some more. And I certainly say it's definitely well worth doing it for the for the kids involved. There are a lot of kids these days who are getting diagnosed with um, ADHD, um, and and I do recognise, of course, that no two kids with ADHD are the same, and no kid, two kids with autism are the same. And there's all sorts of kinds of different um, nuances there, but um, the whole field. I can, I'd like to conclude with the, these two, what I, what I would like to see anyway, and you can read those there. Um, we need to train our chess coaches to look out for those kids. That's what I believe we need to do. And we need to do more research. Now, I'm not motivated myself to do more research ahead of other things which I want to try and do in research, which I'll talk about tomorrow. but. Um, if, if, in that, if, what I, if in what I'm doing, I can do a little sub thing which relates to um, this field, then I'll certainly do it. That's about it. Thanks, yeah, John. Wait.